Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here one more time. This is Memorial Day here in Minnesota, Memorial Day across the country. And there are a lot of things that's going on today here in Minnesota. We have the State Fair. This is our last day, and I'm sure there might be other state fairs taking place in other states. Tomorrow is the first day of school for South Washington County Schools. And um, I am sitting here thinking about you and I must admit to you that this is one of the saddest days of my life. It's no different than many of them except I'm a little older now and the problems of this day and the problem of every day affects me a little bit more than normal. And so I find myself here trying to share with you, not to bring you down, but to just share some moments with you that might be beneficial. Now one of the reasons that I'm down, ladies and gentlemen, is because of those people, sisters and brothers across the land that are suffering. When I think about people at the fair buying cookies and eating ice cream on a, a fried ice cream on a stick, when I think about the people that are taking the various rides, and I think about people who are going to events such as sports events, and I think about people that are flying across the country or driving across the country. Uh, excusing those who are in the path of the hurricane that's down on the coast. And I think about those that are going to go through some devastating changes. And I feel so sad for them. But I also feel sad for the people here in Minnesota and across this country who can't go anywhere. Who probably have no excitement today, just another day amongst the days that are considered every day. When I think about those kids down on the borders who've been running from oppression, hoping that they could find some kind of kindness here, only to run into what they have been running from. It troubles me, ladies and gentlemen, because it bothers me that I know I have been blessed, I have been given proof that God exists. And with that proof, I've been able to accept what most people have not been able to accept. And that is that God has a plan for humankind on this planet, not just in Minnesota or the United States, but on this planet. But deception has set in, and most people don't know anything about that degree about God. So that being the case where God has been rejected, they have replaced God with what we call money. When we think about God, we think about things that humankind can't do. For instance, the building of the earth, the hills and the valleys, the lakes, the rivers, the seas, the oceans. When we think about the trees, the flowers, the grass, when we think about the vegetations and the fruits, when we think about the oil, iron ore, gasoline, all of the other resources that are too many to even begin to try to mention here at this moment, that's in the earth, on the earth, above the earth, whether they are seen or unseen. When we think about the ants, the birds, the animals, and when we think about ourselves, we acknowledge that there must be a God. Many of us do. Some of us think that we come from fish, apes, or rocks. But the masses, I'm sure, have accepted the fact that we come from an intelligent mind. I have. And so that makes it very complicated when I think about the position we find ourselves in today. I think about man. Anything that man can't do, he relegate to the authority of God, those who believe in God. And those things that man might be able to do, 
he will relegate to himself. Then the difference between man's relegation of himself and that of God is that God's come out perfected. When man does it, it comes out corrupt. God does it for justice. God does it for love. Man does it for money. You heard the expression that man could find some way to restrict oxygen in such a container that every individual could find it accessible, they would sell oxygen. They already sell in water. And they sell oxygen. They just don't have it where they can have it in mass production. And so that basically means that those who cannot afford it would be like the ones who are sitting at home today with nothing to do. No games to play, no ones to visit, no access to visit people. They just have to sit back and wonder if there is a God. Things like peace. They talk about peace. Everybody talks about peace, but there is no peace because there is no justice. But there can be peace. Only God's plan could offer peace. But man having something to do with the daily activities, goals and coming of humankind, there is no peace. Money. Money. They say with money you can do everything. In fact, there's very little that you can do on earth, especially here in the United States, that you can access without money. I mean, just the basic essentials for living are denied you if you don't have money. And if you have a measure of money, you can do all kinds of things. You don't just have to live in a tent. You don't have to live in substandard housing. You can live in mansions. You can possess car lots of uh, what you just say you want to uh, um, collect the various cars. And people who collect these various cars and stuff, they all, many of them, not all of them, love God. People who own these big mansions and these planes and flights and got millions of dollars stashed away, billions of dollars stashed away. They say they love God, but uh, they sleep quite well at night when others are suffering. I re I'm reminded of a movie called The Incredibles. Many of you might have seen that movie, The Incredibles. The Incredibles, that was that family that had some superpowers and they could do all kinds of things and there are those who watch people with power, like watching people with money. You are jealous and you want to be able to do what people can do with money. And sometimes it's not being jealous, you just want to be able to do what you want to do. But in this particular movie with The Incredibles, there was one individual that was set aside to represent what most people uh, feel. They wanted the same kind of power, and so they would try to make certain things that would allow them that kind of power. And so, as you, those of you who saw the movie, when the, the young, whatever you want to call him, I call him the young man. <laughs> he was a cartoon, but the young man who wanted to amass and, and have these same kind of powers, once he found out these powers could be made, available to everyone, then he was not interested any further. And his, his, his explanation was that if everybody got power, then nobody got power. And so the greatest power when everybody got power is if no one, an individual, didn't have power, then that particular one would be the most uh, impressive one around. We think about man and what man tries to do to better himself, to, to come, become God. We think about the humanoids that are being made. We think about the, the uh, computers and we think about the machinery that's been uh, technologically advanced to replace humankind. Not that humankind could be free to enjoy all the life that is available to them that God has presented, but to take them out of the workplace so that the work can still be done without paying the money. You know, like in America, you've got to pay a certain wage because somebody's on your back. But you will hire others who suffer and who will work for half of whatever the American people will work for. If the American people will work for minimum wage, then you'll find somebody who will work for half that. 
That's because you want the money. With that money, it makes you more powerful than those that don't have money. And so you become, in your own mind, God. When you go to Walmart and Target and these other fast uh, shopping centers, you see these new technological cashiers that people used to stand there and work try to make a little change. But now they got these machines. And so people don't have these jobs anymore. Doesn't mean that they can run free and go here and go there. No, they have to go to the welfare line. Or go try to see if they can find them another job. Jobs that are now being reduced because you don't have a job. And everything you need requires money. And so if you don't have money, you know, rather than become a thief like the system, rather than become a, a, a misfit like the system, you might start stealing. And then ending up in jail and in prisons and stuff of this sort, just trying to maintain a measure of life. But the thing that really brings me to this point, ladies and gentlemen, is this. I know for a fact that God is God. I know for a fact that this plan is that we should all live as though we are in heaven. And I'm sure even those of you who haven't had any experience in any type of good life, you recognize what a heavenly life would be like, even if it has only come to you in a dream. You've got some kind of idea of what it is like. And yet, God loves you so much, and I've mentioned to you that this problem has existed since the beginning of time, but I won't try to take you far back there. I'll try to bring it right here. Because things haven't changed. You might see a different situation yesterday than today, but the mechanics of yesterday is still in operation today. And that is denying God anything that man, the rights on anything that man thinks he can duplicate himself. And so this brings me to this sad, sad moment, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm reminded that God is oftentimes sending to at least America, and I have to believe to the rest of the world as well, information about his own plan, the information that would give you freedom, information that would give you peace and prosperity and justice and joy of life and the fulfillment of your dreams. And yet that deception has taken place so deeply that that fact, that reality has been rejected at all levels. I can guarantee you that those who got a lot of money don't want to hear anything about God if it means taking away money. Those who are reaching out for money, there are people who would rather buy a lottery ticket and put a faith in a lottery ticket than to believe that God is any answer to their prayers, even though they pray. And, and people have come in response to their prayer, but they didn't do things magically. And so they were re. Rejected. I remember years ago several instances where God sent a young man to the American people and told them about peace, about the joy of life, told them how they could really experience the wonderfulness, the beauty of life. Yes, told them and that message was totally rejected. They totally rejected God. And then only to several years later come along and replace whatever they had at that time trying to get a step up with a dictator named Donald Trump. Now the difference between Donald Trump and the one that God originally sent is that they had been taught to hate the color of the one that was sent. They were taught to disbelieve that anyone who didn't have money, didn't have enough God, could really serve them. And so all it took was one who had the same color that they taught was supreme and had enough of the money that they felt comfortable that he had enough God he wouldn't have to depend on the others who had failed them. And he, they bought into his lie just like they bought into every lie except this time it's been bad. Now some say, well, we didn't vote for Trump, we voted for Clinton. And see, the problem there is that when Clinton was put before you, it was not because she was a, truly an alternative. Clinton is just as evil 
Well, when I say Clinton is just as evil, I want to make it fair. She's just as evil as any American. But because she has a position of power, that evilness can be felt beyond what your evilness can reach. And so her purpose in that plan was that if you, the people, had not been reduced so low that you were really ready to accept the devil as you did, she would just be there to keep you, to keep everybody at the same level and reduce you as time passes on so that later on the devil would be able to get on the throne of the United States of America. Now, I have decided after all of these years, I recognize that, and it has been quite a few years, that on a day like today, with people rejecting God, what could I possibly do to bring me some excitement? I'd have to play the devilish games. I'd have to go out and try to find some party to go to. Now, there's nothing wrong with a party, but that's what we would do. And I'd have to go out and find some way to get my head right, meaning some drinks, maybe getting high, but for lack of uh, trying to describe it, just getting high. And being a man, probably trying to find me some woman to live in a hotel and pretend like everything was all right. I say that because I've spent many years doing that. But having gotten a little older, maybe some people say you can't do it now. Maybe it's because I made a choice and, 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 and won't try that now. But the point of it is, people do these kinds of things because they're hurting. People do these kinds of things because they're suffering. People do these kinds of things because they don't have an outlet. They don't know what to do. No one is sharing the kind of truth that works for them. Now, you would think that churches, and I'm talking about all of them, Protestants, Catholicism, I'm talking about uh, Jehovah Witnesses, I'm talking about Mormons, I'm talking about everybody that call themselves set aside as a religion. Everybody that call themselves a church or something. You would think, because they say so, they represent this God that I'm telling you about. But the God that I'm telling you about is the same God that worked with Jesus. Jesus died, if that story is true, at the age of 33, because he would not settle for what you are settling for. Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X died at the age of 39 because they would not settle for what you are settling for. Right now, I understand that the whole nation of China has decided to put one man on th the throne because they are willing to settle for any stuff that comes down on them rather than have to go through what Jesus, King, Malcolm X, and so many others have gone through. I hear that in Hong Kong, they're trying to stand up for some sense of democracy. They are fed up with this dictatorial type of system. They don't really know that Democracy is nothing but another form of man's government. We have democracy in America. America has held democracy up as the profound thing to be. And ever since America has been in existence, there have been people persecuted. There have been people treated as slaves. There have been people who lost their land. They've been sent through the ringer with democracy. There's nothing wrong with God's plan. And if you want to have some democracy, that might be okay if you're deciding what day would be a better day to do this or to do that? But when it has to do with life, when it has to do with food, clothing, shelter, education, peace, prosperity, freedom, and justice, and joy of life, and the fulfillment of your dreams, this is non-negotiable. But we have found a way to accept it. And this is why I'm so depressed today, ladies and gentlemen, because I reject it all. And I understand that if you listen to me, I have given you as much as I can give you. I've had thousands of videos that's, that's posted on YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, and other spaces. I got CDs and DVDs, pamphlets and brochures, and some kind of publications out there trying to get a message to you that you have rejected. And I can't get mad with you because you reject the message. You can't do what you can't do. If you don't know any better, you can't do any better. And then sometimes in order to do better, and when you know one is there to tell you better, you got to want better. And if you want better, you will seek to do better. And in so doing, the spirit of God's love can see and identify with you and allow you to have that spirit to come into you. And you don't need no man. You don't need me to tell you. You don't need no one to tell you about the love of God because that spirit will transcend all that God is about straight to you. And you become a spokesman for God. You won't go sit down. You won't go build your church trying to get people to come there so you can be a big shot, so that you can have a nice 
uh, home, a nice ride, and hold yourself up as somebody. So I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, it is a sad day for me. I do know, as I said earlier, that if you paid any attention to me, that I'd be killed, just like those who have been before me, who were personifications of what God is. And so, out of all these years that I've been speaking to you about God, I'm still living. God has found some reason to keep me here. And I guess it must be because I've missed the mark. There's something that I haven't shared with you because the world isn't better and I'm still living. I'm not dead. So something must be wrong with what I'm trying to say. And I'm asking God to lift it up in such a way that I can see clear. I want the world to be better. I want every last human being on the face of the earth to enjoy life as if God, my friend, is the center of everything that they think about. And that doesn't mean stop drinking, stop smoking, stop partying, stop having fun. That's the deception that you've been given to believe that life is nothing with God. They tell you stupid stuff. Like the, that, that God, you got to sit around in white robes and walk around and sing holy, holy, holy all day. Eat honey. Drink milk. That's the most dumbest, silliest, stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. But Americans believe it. And they reject it. They'd rather go down and do whatever is done under man's rule to call themselves experiencing a measure of life. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I came out to let you know that when my friends, I've been with them for quite some time my, in my lifetime. And I've hoped that we would be a little bit different than the generation before us. But I find out that we're on the same path. We're following the same rules. We're following the same dictates of yesterday. And it has us right here where they were, but a little bit deeper in the quagmire. And so there's nothing to be bragged about on that. And so I would like to say that I cannot call people that I have in the past call my friends. I mean, I got nothing. They, you're my brothers, you're my sisters, but you're not my friends. I cannot accept any longer anybody, my friend, who says it's okay for those kids down on the borders to go through what they're going through. See, the love of God, if it was practiced in this nation, then we would know how to exploit it in such a degree that the people in Central America, people in other parts of the world, even the people in China would be ashamed to know that there's a country as great and as free and as prosperous as the United States of America. Following the dictates of God, they have to change. They would not accept it any other way. They couldn't stand before their people and say that China has the best government on the face of the earth. They couldn't stand in front of the Russian people and say Russia has the best government on the face of the earth. How could they do that when the United States people are booming in, in love and joy and all of the Things that you could imagine. They couldn't do it. So they have to do it just to maintain their sense of worth. But no, we don't do that. And so all of the hell is breaking loose. You still got these two evil people. And when I say evil people, I'm talking about Republicans and Democrats trying to tell you that they are better for you. And you got the preachers and others who try to represent God on Sundays, and some of them don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't go out and have fun, they don't even take the opposite sex home. They don't want to even be seen with them without somebody else watching them, because they think that this is honoring God. They think going to church every Sunday, telling to one another that they're glad that God woke them up. Well, I don't think God is more respectful for that than those who don't even know God. He woke them all up. But now you've been uh, reduced to thinking that you're coming out as this is a form of honoring God. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you this. If you honor someone, that means what they do, you respect. The kinds of things they engage themselves in, you respect. And if you truly, truly, truly worship them, then the things that they do are the same kinds of things that you would do. Or if you didn't do the same exact things, the things that you did, you would use the same integrity that they used to come out on top. Well, that doesn't happen. And so, as I stand here today, I'm trying to say not only am I sad and turning my back and on my friends, you're still my brothers and sisters and I still love you, but I can't call you a friend. 
I'm also doing the same thing to the church. I've been in the church all my life. For the past 40 years, I've been doing God's work. And I'm listening to people every Sunday testifying how they're filled with the Holy Ghost and burning with power. They don't want to wear clothes with certain colors. They don't want to wear clothes that fit a certain kind of way because they're serving God. And they go home every day knowing that people are suffering. And they are complaining about somebody smoking. If a man got a body and he wants to smoke a cigarette and that cigarette will kill him, that's his choice. As long as he treats people like he want to be treated. But now you're going to judge him because he smoked a cigarette. Call him a son of man. Call yourself blessed. Saved because you don't smoke. You couldn't tell them people across the board that you saved. They don't want to hear that. You can't tell these people around here who don't have food, who don't have uh, the wherewithal for life. And after a while, these people who are going through these storms and hurricanes and things, you won't be able to tell them that your faith in God is worth anything because you know the faith that you have is called money. And like Donald Trump said about Puerto Rico, we ain't giving you no money. We keeping that. And he's saying about the people who want to come into this country, not just anybody, you will let you in here if you got money. Now, most folks who got money is not running to this country <laughs> unless they're trying to make more money. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think you've got the zest of what I'm trying to say. What I've said is that God is real. And we Americans have found a fake God in money. And it will never free you. And don't think that you are alone. Everybody who got some money in this country, they will share with charity. They'll do that. But if you think about taking anything away from them, that's, that, they don't have a job. A job that their friends can't have. And they make a little bit more money. And they can do a little bit more different things. Exciting things that their friends can do. Because they got a little bit more God. Money. And you try to mess with that. You're going to have yourself one heck of a fight. So what is it going to take? I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take. If you lost everything. It would put you back in the same state that it was in the beginning. When you really didn't have anything. But a hope and a promise. And even then, deception came along. And you bowed to that. So I don't know what it's going to take. I have done everything that God has given me to do. And all of it has failed as far as enlightening even my those that are close to me. Those who see me, know me every day. Well, I've heard it said that a message can be, and I'm paraphrasing this, can be accepted by a lot of people in a lot of different places. But at home, it's going to be rejected because they knew you back when. When you were just like them. And you're trying to say you're a little different now, they ain't going for it. And if you are different, you trickster. So ladies and gentlemen, I know I'm leaving something out, but you can't say it all at one time. And if I got anything that's different than what I'm saying to you right now, I'm sure t today, before it's over, or sometime tonight before I go to sleep, I'll be back sharing a message with you. So up until this point, I want to thank you so very much on this Memorial Day 2019 for giving me this year time to stand before you and to share with you the wonderfulness of God Almighty and expose the deception of those who have bought into the fact that the dollar is a replacement for God. Until next time, goodbye.